perhaps you can explain just a basic concept for us, uh, uh, immortalization. What, how do we understand that? So immortalization is something that, uh, so I, I should explain that I'm a cancer researcher. Um, and so my interest... Also the expert advisor on the film who actually guided me all the way through it, so I'm extremely grateful to him. <laughs> yes. um, so my, my interest in this whole area is from the point of view of, uh, of cancer research. And I've been studying um, cancer cell immortalization for the last 25 years. And immortalization just refers to the ability of cancer cells to go on dividing an unlimited number of times. And that's in contrast to our normal cells, which will divide a certain number of times and stop. Uh, and that's what Len Hayflick is, is famous for discovering back in the very early, uh, in the 1960s, um, that our normal cells don't have the capacity to go on dividing forever. Uh, they, they have a, what, what we call after him, um, the, the Hayflick limit. They'll divide a certain number of times and then stop. So there's, there's quite a stark contrast between normal cells and cancer cells. Um, so it's, uh, we're a little bit fuzzy about the nomenclature of, often. It's not that the cancer cell itself is immortal, but that the cancer cell population is immortal because the cancer cells can keep on reproducing themselves. So cancer cells die. Um, um, you can kill cancer cells. Um, very often in cancers, they, the cancers run out of, um, you know, they have a very poor blood su supply. There are cancer cells that die. But nevertheless, the population is immortal because it can keep, keep on dividing. And cells have some kind of memory, as he was saying as well, because there was that the experiment of the freezing of the cells and then they remembered how many times to replicate. How does that work? So that, we think that the memory uh, for how many times the predecessor cells have divided is primarily in telomere length. So he didn't know that at, at the time that he described, um, you know, he originally described um, that phenomenon uh, that, that cells have a memory of how many times their predecessors uh, have divided um, and it wasn't explained uh, really, um, or wasn't, it wasn't demonstrated experimentally um, that that was due to telomere length until really the early 1990s. So before we, we started talking about uh, telomeres and telomerase, how did we understand what was happening when cancer strikes? There are lots of facets of, of the cancer cell, and Im immortalization is only one of them. So there are a number of other key um, features of cancer cells. And it came across very briefly, but very nicely um, in, in, the f in the film, um, that you have to have a whole series of, of genetic changes for a normal cell to become a cancer cell. So it's not just a matter of switching telomerase on. The analogy used in the film was that having high levels of telomerase gives the cancer cell or the cancer cell population endless fuel. But you also have to have accelerators uh, that are stuck in the on position. And you have, have the brakes cut. So it's a combination of uh, genes that have mutations that propel the cell uh, to, to uh, keep on doing the things that cancer cells do. You've got to have the brakes removed Plus, you've got to have this endless fuel supply. So just turning telomerase on is not enough uh, to cause cancer. 